and students were pretty excited. They were, you may have seen if you look at LinkedIn that some of them were looking you up and they're like, okay, that's I, cool. Like, oh my God, he went to Harvard. Wow. And so I guess start off telling us about, you know, who you are and, you know, where you went to school, what was your major, that type of thing. Yeah. So my name is Shannon Joyner, Vice President of Marketing for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I'm originally from Atlanta, so born and raised here. Went to Morehouse College for undergrad and was a marketing major um, at Morehouse. And, and really there is where kind of the convergence of marketing and, and sports happened. It really kind of crystallized for me that this could be a, a fun career to pursue. I was fortunate enough to have some pretty good internships in that space. Uh, while at Morehouse, the summer after my sophomore year, I interned in the marketing department for Sports Illustrated in New York. And the summer after my junior year, I interned with Nike uh, doing marketing um, at their New York office. So those two opportunities really kind of set me on my path and, you know, really I think confirmed that this was a space that I wanted to pursue and learn more about. So first big break after I graduated, I moved to New York um, to work for the NBA and their global marketing partnerships group, which is their uh, marketing sponsorship group. So I worked with a lot of, you know, big time companies with their NBA partnerships, uh, the headliners, Nike, American Express uh, and 2K Sports. Um, so that was really interesting because I was getting obviously a brand new experience in the space, but also learning how, you know, the NBA markets its own brand, but then how other companies are trying to, you know, use the NBA as part of their portfolio to market their own um, brands. And, and, and that was just a, a strong learning experience for me, because in a way, when I'm dealing with the partners themselves, I'm the NBA advocate. But when I'm dealing with the NBA internally, I'm the partner's advocate. So. Right. You know, learning how to navigate both of those spaces was really um, interesting. And and so then kind of during my time there, which was an amazing experience. Um, but one of the things I kind of took from it is kind of a, a funny thing of one, you know, people in sports love their jobs, which is true. And just people are so passionate and all these things, and which kind of leads to the second thing is that people in sports don't really leave their jobs mm -hmm. the same way that other industries um, there's there's movement within the sports industry, but a lot of people love it, so they kind of stay in it. So, you know, sports doesn't have the same, you know, kind of structured, you know, kind of growth. You know, when you right. think about consulting or banking, it's kind of right, your junior analyst two years and you become an analyst for two years and senior analyst two years. It's not the same space, you know, for sports. It's more of a, you know, uneven opportunistic type of space. And so what I'm kind of getting at is, um, I wanted to go back to business school to get my MBA and a few motivations for that. One was kind of to this, you know, something continue to add credibility, yeah. you know, to my um, resume as I continue to grow. But the second piece was, you know, as I wanted to rise in my space, you know, from a marketing side, I knew that the general management piece was going to continue to grow more and more important. And so being able to you know, know enough of the language with the different areas of business would be um, important because I knew, you know, who knew, again, this kind of unpredictable sports space where you're going to, um, opportunities going to present themselves and where you're going to land. And so I feel like an MBA plus the experience I already had together would put me on a good path. So did that. And that's where I went to, to Harvard Business School to get my MBA. Um, it was an amazing two-year experience there. A lot of you know, really smart people, but um really cool people and really being exposed to you know harvard as a case study method so you're not just kind of studying straight textbook it is more each class um is a case so you're studying a real life business situation and then using the skills you're learning in school to apply in that situation and what would you do if you're the were the protagonist and things like that so that, that was really pretty incredible learning experience um, for me, I did a grad internship with Nike at their headquarters in Portland um, during the summer between those two years. Uh, that was a great experience and that um, I was able to receive a full-time offer tied to that. 
Nice. So I went back to Boston for a year, graduated, and then moved to Portland wow. uh, for a year and was in a marketing leadership rotation program that I had three different marketing jobs within two years in all different disciplines within their broader marketing space, including uh, for a year I had the opportunity to live in Amsterdam. Um, and that was uh, Nike has offices all over the world, but their European headquarters are based in Amsterdam. So I got to do that. And that was really cool because what I got to work on was uh, soccer marketing for Europe. And yeah. you know, when you think about, you know, obviously that sport and how culturally intertwined it is with that area was just such a great learning experience for me. So I did that uh, for a year, moved back to Portland, kept going at Nike, and then got the opportunity to come back home uh, to join the Falcons and their marketing department. At that point, the role was marketing director. And that was uh, summer 2018. Um, and then I've just, uh, you know, thoroughly enjoyed my time in the five and a half years I've been here since then. I'm sure we'll, we'll go into the details of that, but here I am. Wow, that's incredible. I already know that some of my students are just, because I know them so well, they're just, I can already tell their heads are going to be exploding hearing all of that. That sounds absolutely incredible. So, you know, if like, let's say you're not at Harvard Business School. Mm -hmm. If you want to set yourself up on that type of path, like, it, like, let's say for one of my students here at Georgia College, how can they best position themselves for something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think I would say really three things. I said the first one is, and they all kind of are under the lens of control what you can control, right? So, you know, how well you do in school in your classes, and I mean, that that's on you, right? So, you know, being able to, you know, have you know, on your resume, a quality GPA and things like that, like you can control that um, to the best of your, but in terms of the effort, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the first one. The second one is, um, you know, when you think about a typical college student's day, they're really only in class a minimal amount compared to the full day, right? So what are you doing? And of course, there's a lot of other activities and things you need to sleep, have fun, all those are true, but yeah. What is the outside of the classroom worrying you're doing for yourself? You know, when you just think about now, I mean, people are literally teaching themselves how to code by watching mm -hmm. YouTube, right? So how are you taking advantage of resources outside of um, the classroom to just learn direct or indirect skills that just add to your toolkit? I think that's really um, important. And then the third piece is, okay, you know, everyone's saying, all right, how do I get the best internship or make the right um, connection, but when you think about the sports space, you know, getting internships for pro teams and big brands is difficult. It's super competitive, yeah. and but you know they pull from students all over the world, so it's not diminishing um, the opportunity to do that. But I would say that flank that with what's right around you. So every single school, for the most part, has an athletic department, and mm -hmm. those athletic departments are. You know, like they are businesses within the university. Athletic department has to do with strategy, marketing, operations. They all have, you know, multimedia engines, you know, now. And so um, every place, but especially colleges, university love uh, cheap or free labor. So yeah. <laughs> um, there's just so many kind of resources right in your own backyard of being able to have hands-on experience with these different spaces. So I always encourage students, you know, to look at your own athletic department, you know, for opportunities there. And then, yeah, like it, it is a grind. What are other spaces and internships? Like you do need to be, you know, kind of hitting the path hard on what are, are you know, applying to a lot of different internships in it. And ultimately, I think everybody, you know, if you have kind of an industry and you're interested in, and then a function you're interested in. So for me, marketing and sports, everybody wants those two to come together right away, which I get it, that is the ideal, but the reality of it is that just take sports. Sports is no different than insurance, oil and gas, whatever you know, comprehensive competitive industry, they want the best of the best. So they're looking at, okay, it's not just, I, if I'm looking for a marketing person, it's not just, I'm just looking at marketing people that come from sports, they're just looking for the best marketing people. Yeah. So because of that, I encourage a lot of people always like, if there is an opportunity where it may not be the exact space that you want to be in, but it is allowing you to grow and learn a skill set, that will often 
prove more beneficial than just trying to keep pursuing until you get this magic convergence of that space. Obviously, you have your whole career um, to to right size exactly where you want to be. But the ability to, especially early on, it's just about adding to your toolkit and getting exposure. So, you know, don't, you know, close off or say no to opportunities that may not on surface level seem exactly aligned to what you want to do, but you'd be surprised how transferable skills are and how that can benefit you kind of down the line. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Well, so diving into the Falcon specifically, I saw your your most recent Instagram post. It was an personal Instagram, but you were talking about how you know, leading up to the beginning of the Falcons season, things starting right now, everything that you guys were doing. So can you tell us like what what was going into your marketing plan? How hands on are you with even, you know, maybe the minutia of what's happening? Um, you know, tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so I think just first good context, right? Season kickoff is always one of the biggest moments of the year for any team in any league at any level, because, you know, Everyone's zero and zero fans, you know, our anticipation is high and, you know, there's there's hope and there's belief. And so there's already a good kind of built in platform. So the opportunity on the marketing side or the experiential side, content storytelling is how do you kind of maximize that enthusiasm? Um, and, and that's what we kind of set out to do. So that's just kind of every year. So every year. We put a lot of effort into a moment like season kickoff. But contextually for us specifically, there's definitely a heightened expectation for our team um, this year. For all the people that kind of know about the Falcons story, you know, the last few years, it's been it's been tough. We haven't performed at the level um, that we've that we've wanted to. Um, so that's just a reality. But the other side of it, which is an excuse, but it's just a part of the story is, you know, we have we have had a prohibitive salary cap the last few years, which has prevented us from being able to acquire talent at the level um, that we know we need yeah. to be ultra competitive, you know, the highest level in the league. And we kind of cleared those books heading into this past um, off season. And so we were able to have a very active free agency, a very active re-signing of our key players, a very active draft. And so, the the talent level on the team from an objective level is the highest it's been collectively than it's been in the last few years. That's just the truth. And yeah. so because of that, um, our fans are are smart and they understand that too. So, you know, they understand that the expectation should be higher um, this year. So when you add the, the standard kind of um, excitement, enthusiasm for season kickoff every year, Plus that um, increased expectation and anticipation this year, we knew that we had a platform for season kickoff this year to to provide content and access and opportunity that our fans would eat up at a really high level. Um, and so with that, the first thing for us is that when you think about season kickoff, most people most immediately go to the week leading up to you know the first game of the season but for us internally when we say season kickoff that's really from the start of training camp uh, which is the end of august all the way through the first you know game and even for us this year because we have two straight home games to start the season we're even coupling both of those to be treated as season kickoff so because of that it's really for us more of a five to six week campaign if you will versus mm -hmm. just one week so what are elements of that that can do both sustain as well as ramp up you know culminating um in the actual kind of season kickoff game so a couple of things for us is so training camp uh the nfl started this really cool um initiative kind of coming out of covid and you know fans coming back together of uh, the first uh, Saturday of training camp across the league, uh, calling it back together Saturday and really encouraging uh, teams. You know, our training camp is at our facility in Flowery Branch, mm -hmm. Georgia, which is about, you know, 40 miles right. like, kind of northeast of of you know the city center. And so we did a big kind of back together Saturday activation, really encouraging fans to be out there, had a lot of different 
you know, fan um, kind of games, fan friendly stuff, concessions, retail, former players, mascot, cheerleaders, the whole works. Um, our head coach and our general manager addressed the crowd there. And we had the most fans at that event that we had had at training camp practices in years. Wow. Um, so that was just a really cool, immediate kind of validation point that was like, there's there's something clearly in the market that is a heightened expectation. So then kind of moving forward for us, then the next kind of five to six weeks or so, when we really think about, um, you know, kind of storytelling and, and connecting with our audiences, there's really kind of three lenses that we think about it. So um, you have the game day experience, everything that happens inside and around the stadium on game day, you know, which is the culmination. But then you have um, everything we do from a digital and social platform. So all of our social platforms, our website, you know, our app is that piece. And then third is in market. So kind of boots on the ground, experiential, direct, you know, palpable, touching our brand. So those are the three kind of, um, you know, kind of stools, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of how we think about fan engagement for a campaign. And then you have this kind of supporting lens, but it is just as, as key as the others. And that really is your, your kind of PR and your media mm -hmm. where it's not directly Falcons, but working with partners, um, TV, print, you yeah. know, digital, media, that kind of stuff, yeah, all those things that that help tell the story too. So, yeah. um, it's really kind of those four together. And so, if you look at our channels, well, we did a really good job of, you know, the season ends early January last year. Our players come back, you know, kind of middle of summer, so. We shot a whole bunch of content with our players inside our building. We went um, throughout the country to where they were. Um, Troy Anderson, you know, our starting linebacker, uh, he is from Montana and has a really incredible story. We actually went to Dillon, Montana, where he was in the offseason and shot content to tell the story of who he was and where he came from. I don't know if you saw... Uh, in January, we launched a new kind of state-of-the-art digital content studio connected to our facility, which, you know, really feels like ESPN in our own backyard. So the ability to use that to produce more stories. And so over the course of those five to six weeks, we had already stockpiled a whole bunch of, you know, kind of feature storytelling, as well as the new storytelling coming out of training camp. So we just had so many stories and videos and content editorial, um, you know, written pieces that, you know, unmasked our players that told the story of the team. And so that was such a cool way to connect with our fans, um, you know, from a digital and social side. Also happening during that time on the media side is um, our PR team working with both local uh, media as well as national media. So you were seeing our players and our coach and our general manager on, you know, local newscasts and then, you know, national you know, NFL Network and those like that stories, too. So another way to connect our, our fans um, to our team. And then this past week really hit the overdrive of the kind of in-market experiential piece. And we did everything from a fun kind of day-long block party field day activation on the Beltline uh, to the Friday night um, before our first game, having a massive pep rally. Um, at Atlantic Station, where we have thousands of fans in attendance and had our players and our coach and our general manager, T.I., performed out there. Um, so just these moments were literally directly together, boots on the ground was really cool, too. But then we also find ways like we want to be a brand that, you know, has when you think about the pyramid of consumers or fans of us, you have, you know, these diehards, season ticket members, you know, eat everything we have up, love football. We know that flanking that is almost concentric circles of more casual fans and, and knowing us wanting to be, in addition to a football brand, a lifestyle brand, mm -hmm. what are other ways to engage the broader audiences? And so that's why we did stuff like we launched a really cool lifestyle retail line um, that really kind of showcased Falcons. But also, if you look at it and you're a fan of the city of Atlanta, you'd be kind of cool to wear that, too. Because we know, again, everyone is not going to be that central diehard, but we still want to find ways to engage um, with 
our fans too. We know Atlanta and lifestyle and fashion is is really important yeah. to be here too. So all that kind of culminated into you know the game day experience and just couldn't be more proud of the team and how that game went. And you know our job is obviously to put on the game, but it is to have fun and, and and make the fans feel like it is kind of a Falcons party. And you know from I don't know if you saw, but our our mascot Freddie Falcon basically like bungee jumping from the roof that went viral, which is crazy, <laughs> to Jeezy performing um, on the field uh, during a commercial break and all these other things in between, really felt this cool convergence of our our team was playing well on the field. We ended up winning the game, but all these other elements kind of supporting fan engagement. Um, and so just to to have the victory be one to know, and then just to see the the outcome of those weeks of execution, but before that months of planning right. uh, to get to that point was just super satisfying and excited to see where we go the rest of the year. Yeah. Well, and you kind of um, alluded to something else that I wanted to ask, which was, you know, how much of the culture of Atlanta itself do you see as also being a part of the Falcons organization? And I think I kind of have an idea of where you're going to go with this, but just yeah. for you may not know. Well, it's huge. I mean, we say all the time, like we're not Falcons, we're Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, and so because of that, there's a connectivity obviously with the community. Community give back is, is, is a huge part of who we are. Um, Arthur Blank, our owner has these core values that resonate through our organization and the notion of, giving back to community is a huge aspect. Another huge aspect is, is, is reflecting the community. So interests and themes and trends that, and, and it's really not just Atlanta, right? I mean, it's Atlanta, you even heard the jokes of ITP, OTP, the suburbs yeah. the city <laughs> center, but, but, you know, our games are available to people all throughout the state. Yeah. So, you know, it's important for us to, you know, Atlanta's, you know, maybe at that core, but, connectivity to the entire um, state is really important. Uh, we have a Friday uh, program that we do with our mascot where we have these um, elementary school pep rallies every single Friday. And the Friday, last Friday for kickoff, we weren't in Atlanta for the school shows, we were in Macon. Um, I know, I, I figure you're gonna have that. Yeah, I figure you're gonna have that reaction. So. Uh, and I and I don't have the schools off top. I'll get that. Ah. But it's but it's important. I mean, so <laughs> we we it's it's important for the entire state to feel, yeah. you know, included in in different ways. Um, so yes, to answer your question, the connectivity to the broader community and that can be defined in a lot of different ways is really important to us. If you get down to Macon again, you better let me know. I wasn't <laughs> there, but but I, I but the but the team. Um, we had a really cool team and presence there, so definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm sure the kids loved it. That's fantastic. So getting down to kind of some, some nitty gritty, how hands-on are you, like, with these with the storytelling aspect, with the social media? Like, are you in in the down deep in it, or do you yeah. have hands-on? So, <laughs> sort of. So I, I joke all the time that, like, I'm not the person that, you know, sends a tweet or designs a graphic or, um, you know, is is hands on producing the event at a festival or anything like that. My, my kind of role is really defined by two things. So the first is is the strategy side. You know, what's the big vision? What are we trying to accomplish? What are the consumer insights that are fueling the decisions? You know, why we're doing it? what budget and resources do we need to accomplish it making sure that the broader team is aligned to what we're trying to achieve but that's a huge element of my role and then the second piece is really kind of then the project management mm -hmm. of those initiatives the coordination between different departments making sure the communication making sure you know where things need to be you know troubleshooting being able to step in and, and, and help um, there. So it's the strategy and project management are the two kind of key elements um, of that, but you know, we're all in it together. So 
Um, you know, we very much inverted pyramid in terms of kind of servant leadership. So there, there is no kind of levels. Someone's too big or too small for a role. Like we're all in it uh, together. So you'll see me at an event carrying boxes. Like that's just kind of how we um, are. But we have a very talented team of smart, creative people that have different disciplines. Like we have a great creative design team. We have a great social media team. We have a great video production team. We have a great grassroots marketing team and so on and so on. And we all kind of work together to then take this plan and bring it to life, knowing that everything kind of clicks up to a broader goal, but how it comes to life is going to be nuanced and needs to be manifested in different ways to um, reach that specific audience in a way that's going to resonate with them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So how many people are on your team? Um, It's a lot. I mean, when you think about our integrated marketing team, so just to give you an idea of our what that means when we say integrated marketing, you have, you know, kind of the kind of brand strategy side for which I live a lot in. We have a digital content team, which includes um, video, uh, editorial, social website. We have a creative design team. We have a game presentation team. That That's the team that if you go to the game itself, everything from who's singing the national anthem to, you know, what you see on the video boards. Wow. Uh, we have a, a, a game presentation and, and live events team that puts on the game day show. We have a fan experience team that that really is deep on the analytics of, you know, from the time you leave your house to when you get back to your house after a game, that full journey of parking and concessions and security. Yeah. We have a team that leans in, um, you know, on that. We have a community relations team that really is about, you know, working with the community directly for give back opportunities. Um, we have a PR team that deals with, uh, you know, the in the media. We have teams that work um, that basically are the conduit between our team and our revenue groups from sponsorship, you know, and ticketing. Retail team, so on, on and on. So it's a pretty large That's um, a lot. Um, team. <laughs> it's a lot and a lot of credit to leadership over the years because how we are now both philosophy and structure is not how we always were um i think what we realized as an organization when you look at 2016 so last year um at the dome before we moved over to mercedes Benz mm-hmm. stadium the organization was the falcons football team um the arthur and blank family foundation and then uh the um early seeds of Atlanta United, but they don't play their first game until uh, 2017. Fast forward just, you know, a couple of years, you have the Atlanta Falcons, the Atlanta United, the foundation. We own our own stadium, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We have PJ Tour Superstore. And then um, Arthur Blank has multiple ranches in Montana. So very quickly, we we became this kind of much larger in scope and structure portfolio company. And so with that came the understanding that we now have to operate the way that, you know, kind of a multi-portfolio company operates the same way they would in in other industries. And I think with that, you know, came a lot of, um, you know, kind of resource investment and reframing philosophically, you know, of our approaches. And so, when you look at the integrated marketing team, that is a byproduct of the progression of us um, as an organization to be like any top tier, um, you know, corporation or brand kind of throughout the country. And we're really excited because uh, we believe we have the right kind of strategy structure and, and um, kind of philosophy and culture to achieve anything we want to. Yeah. I love that you also mentioned even that you know, the the parking is a part of this, that that's a part of the fan experience. It's one of those things that you say it and it makes so much sense, but it wouldn't necessarily be top of mind because of course, if you have a bad experience in the parking lot, it can just yeah, go downhill you, from there. You can have the best marketing campaign <laughs> with the coolest commercials and the best da 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 If someone's coming to a game and is stuck in traffic and can't find their parking or their parking is so expensive you know like all those things yeah like 
that is your brand, right? Yeah. That is your brand. And, you know, a great kind of example of that is as much as our brand is, you know, what you see on our social media platforms and what you see during the game, as much of that is our brand, the same thing is, is that, or if not more, is our fan-friendly pricing mm -hmm. at the stadium, right? Is that you yeah. can come into our stadium and get a hot dog and drinks for your whole family at a price level that is demonstratively less than a lot of other professional sports um, stadiums. And so for us, you know, we don't kind of only focus on, you know, the cool stuff or the things right. that you think the entire consumer journey um, is a part of our brand. And we all work together to make sure that is the maximum best that can be at, at each stage. Yeah, I think I think that's fantastic. And it's such a good point because I think sometimes, you know, especially when for somebody like me who's teaching mass communications, it can be very easy to get caught up in teaching the social media aspect or the PR aspect and forgetting that the entire customer experience is your PR. So that, that's fantastic. Sure. Well, I want to make sure I get some students' questions in. There's okay. really two two big ones. Yeah, um, let's go. One, I don't know if you can answer this one because it's not, I don't know if it's really about marketing. It's it's more about the draft, but they want to know, can you can you get more SEC players? <laughs> so, I, so it's funny, and our general manager kind of, he gets this question a lot, and, and you know, he, he laughs because, there, there's, there's definitely no bias one way or the other. The, the, the responsibility of our, you know, scouting staff, personnel, and, and, and coaching staff is to get the best players that we can, culturally right fits that are going to help us win football games. It's yeah. really not complicated. So that <laughs> player can come from the SEC or that player can come from the Big Ten. Like there's just, right. it just doesn't matter and. But we always we kind of laughed at and, and we love it. And and we also acknowledge the SEC is great. It produces a yeah. lot of, you know, talented uh football players. And when you look at our roster, we have, you know, several yeah. players from from the SEC. But what's funny is you always hear this and yeah, Georgia fans only want us to draft Georgia players, Alabama fans only want us to draft Alabama yeah. players. But if you get into the season and that Alabama player on the Falcons is doing well. That Georgia fan, who's also a Falcons fan, is is happy, and, and, and vice versa. So you know, it's a result, um, you know, business. And so our, um, again, our personnel staff and coaching staff is always going to stay true to the number one objective: um, winning games and winning games the right way. And whoever can help us do that, we're going to be a fan of them too. Yeah. And then the second question they had was they want to know, I'm, I'm trying to phrase this right. What they're really getting at is they want to know about how can they get an internship with the organization. But the way they phrased it was, so how do you need any interns? What kind of interns do you need? Yeah, so a few. So we, starting last year, launched a really cool program. Um, and I, I don't believe off top if we're at – um, your school, but I know, you know, just thinking regionally, I, know, I believe we're at Georgia Southern, we might be at, at Mercer, but we launched uh, last year a really cool program called College Pass. Um, and that program is, you know, understanding that, you know, NFL tickets aren't the cheapest tickets and and it can be harder for certain groups, except for especially younger groups to find their way inside the stadium. So we launched a program that is exclusively for college and university students um, it's a sign up and I can send the link to send to yeah. the group, but basically you have to have an at edu email address. And what it does is, is we often will have last minute, um, tickets available at a discounted rate just for college students. Nice. Um, so you, you might get a text on a Friday that tickets are available for purchase to go to the game on Sunday. So that's, that's the product side of it, but we have a internship program that's called the college pass ambassador program which is um, student internships from students at different colleges and universities around Metro Atlanta with the responsibility to help us kind of promote, um, you know, this this product right. and experience. So, uh, you know, that has gotten going, um, you know, for uh, this season. Um, like I said, I can confirm if we do currently or don't at your particular school, um, but, you know, always looking to add schools. So I think that's an opportunity. <laughs> 
Uh, we also have a uh, grassroots streets team that does activations for our brand throughout um, the community at festivals and community events and concerts. Um, so that is an internship that really starts in that kind of late spring time frame and goes through um, early fall. Um, so nice. we're kind of heavy in that. So both of those programs have an application process um, in that, you know, kind of late winter, you know, early to mid spring time frame. Um, so, you know, definitely in terms of next cycle around, mm -hmm. you know, there's that, but um, can can for sure connect you, yeah. um, Molly, with the head of who's on my team is ahead of those programs. Okay, that'd be great. And she can give you all the information about, you know, that kind of moving forward. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're going to be so so excited. And, and and that and that is you know just from a, a marketing side, but obviously other groups. Um, you know, if you go to our, uh, you know, our website, there's other groups that have opportunities. Our ticketing team, far and away, has the most, um, you know, kind of uh, post grad, uh, part time as well as full time ticketing entry level roles, which is such a great way to get into uh, the organization. So, you know, they start that, um, you know, kind of recruitment and interview process uh, really, you know, kind of in that winter time frame. So there's a lot of different ways to get involved in the organization from internships to entry level for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate that. That's this is the students are going to be thrilled. I know, um, you know, Everybody in the department will be really happy to hear all this, and I'm sure we'll we'll connect some more. Love it. Um, well, I appreciate uh, being able to speak, you know, with you and your students. I know you guys come from a lot of different places. I have a warm spot for the general area. My father is from Fort Valley, Georgia, oh, originally. Okay. So, um, so you know, a lot of love for the general area yeah. around you know where you are. So I've got I've got some friends who are Fort Valley grads. So. Okay. They there will, they will love that. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and awesome. stop recording if I can figure out how to do it.